When it's time to learn more about the world, it's time for the Morning Magazine. Be entertained and informed. Join Paris Ely for the Morning Magazine. Weekday mornings at 9, here on Synergy Radio, 1480. 1480 AM, KLVL, Pasadena, Houston, and 95.3 FM, KT37GS, Pasadena. We are now Synergy Radio, powerful talk that inspires change. joining us for the Business Breakfast Talk Show, where we serve you your most important meal of the day. That's right. We are serving success strategies and system side dishes each Saturday here on Synergy Radio, 1480 AM. So grab your coffee and your croissant, and let's get down to business. We are your Business Breakfast Talk Show hosts. I am Tiffany A. Washington. And I am Joy Hutton Lacey. And it's still Women's Small Business Month, and we are featuring yours truly. <laughs> so let's get ourselves together as we dish all the details about home-based business. Both Joy and I own a business that we run from home. For those of you who are interested in living in and thriving within a home-based business, we have the recipe. So Joy, let's start by defining what a home-based business is. Yes. So, um... A home-based business is any business where the primary office is located mm -hmm. in the owner's home. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's home-based business. <laughs> they don't have to own the property, but they do need to be running a business out of the same premises that they live. Right. Um, and so the business is considered a home business, essentially. So um, it's easy to focus on uh, only on product or service delivery when you're doing a home business, but... Um, you know, you have to take time to actually work on your business. You know, it's easy to get caught up in that working in your business and on your business when you're at home. Right. But, you know, we'll we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll continue to talk about that. So, since we're talking about it, let us know a little bit about your business and what you do. Since we're featuring us today, yes. we want our audience to know a little bit more about what we do. So, what do you do for your home-based business? <laughs> Uh, so, I'm sorry, <laughs> giggles this morning, it's really early, but anyway guys, so my business is Joy of Consulting, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, initially I actually did start off at home, because you know, saving costs and whatnot, I can't even look at it, Tiffany, uh, saving costs and whatnot, and so um, I ended up going to... <laughs> Y'all, hey, let's 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 bring it back because Joy, <laughs> Joy has the giggles this morning, and so this is what happens on live radio sometimes. <laughs> right. So we're gonna get Joy together, and while Joy is getting herself together, let's bring us back to what home-based business yes. is really about. So one of the things that I want you all to understand out there is that you can't just up and <laughs> fly right. into a home-based business. Yes, absolutely. it doesn't mean that you are going to be footloose and fancy free. There are mm. so many foundational pieces right. that go into that. And so, Joy, you found an article yes. by uh, Richard Branson, yes. right? Tell us a little bit about that article. Yes, and before we, we go into that, I have myself together Okay, now. Joy has herself so, uh, together. We, uh, you know, I did start off at, at home, but, you know, I found that there were so many distractions, and we'll talk about all those things. Uh, one, I have a little dog, mm -hmm. and she she's a distraction. You have all these sounds and, mm -hmm. and things at home, and so you really have to be disciplined. And so I actually started um, working out of a co-working space, okay. but then I realized, it was too many people there. Right. And although I love having the synergy of other entrepreneurs, I, I realized, you know, saving money again, mm -hmm. and I can go back home. 
and be in the comfort of my own home. So we'll talk about some of the things that you need when having a home-based business. So yes, you know, even though it's you and your home-based business, that does not mean that you have to be the sole employee. Right. Um, and so, you know, I actually just gave a workshop the other day on changing the mindset from being self-employed to an entrepreneur. Why didn't you invite me, Joy? I didn't know about it. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> so, I, um, you know, and so you, you really do have to change that mindset because a self-employed person yeah. works in their business mm -hmm. but an entrepreneur works on their business absolutely and so we really have to change our mindset about that and you can still have employees in a home-based business mm -hmm. um, you know you can do subcontractors virtual assistants interns you know etc but stuff. you did mention Richard Branson yeah and Richard Branson is all things great you know he works from home mm -hmm. but Really, is his private island. I don't have it like that. <laughs> we're trying. We're aspiring to be the people on the private island, right? Yes, exactly. But he just did an interview about having his employees work from home and the value of that. Mm -hmm. Now he was talking about parents, but you know, it 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 can relate to entrepreneurs as well working at home. Right. So he talked about you know some things that you need. Um, to do, like I was saying, when um, being an entrepreneur and working at home. So one of the first things is actually creating a separate space right. um, in your home to work. You know, if you're working in your bedroom, that's mm -hmm. not a good idea. You know. Well, Joy, I like to work in my bedroom. <laughs> I like to work in my bedroom. I like to work, to work on sleep. my couch. Mm -mm. I like to work in all of those places. See, those are all no nos. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. They say don't sleep where you work or work yeah. where you sleep. And, and, but you know, in all seriousness, I definitely agree. You should not be doing both of those things in the yes, same place because absolutely. you know research even shows that if you're working where you're supposed to be sleeping, it's going to be harder for you to go right. to sleep. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure that it's very separate so mm -hmm. that you can cut it off as well right because if if the place where you sleep and lay <laughs> is also the place where you work your mind will always yes. be thinking about work because you've been trained right. in that particular exactly. place to do work right yeah. and every time you sit down to do some work it's nap time yes <laughs> and I love my nap yes so yes, yeah I exactly. have to stay off the couch y'all yes yes <laughs> get off the couch and get your life yes so yeah, and you talked about, you know, the cutoff. So really, you know, letting your friends and family know when it's do not disturb time. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes working from home can translate to, well, you're home, so uh, can you uh, go get the groceries? Can you do the laundry? Can you do all these different things? Can you call the plumber? You know, but, you know, you can't do that. You don't have time to gossip with the neighbor. People right. are like, oh, well, you're exactly. home. So, no, you have to let your family and friends know and set those boundaries. Yeah, and one of the things that I've experienced while it, while launching my home-based business mm -hmm. is that people think that you're not doing anything. Right. Because you're at home. So they call you in the middle of the day. Yes. <laughs> They'll try to have conversations <laughs> with you via text message and all of that. Right. And that's right. You have to set those boundaries. Otherwise, they will step all over them mm -hmm. and, and uh, step all over you. And you'll end up getting caught up in this long conversation right. that you didn't mean to have. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then in terms of time, you know, time is always precious. Right. You have to reclaim your time. Reclaim your time. <laughs> Make some water. And, you know, sometimes you just have to schedule a hard stop to your day. Right. You know, sometimes as entrepreneurs, yes, we want to work 24 hours a day, but you have to set those boundaries again and make a hard stop you know right. you know whether you have meetings outside of the house or <laughs> you have work to be done um, outside of your your daily grind set a hard stop because otherwise you you just keep going and going and going right and when you don't set that hard stop uh, you don't incorporate <laughs> time for self-care right and I know we'll end up talking about that a little bit later but mm -hmm. you also you'll run yourself ragged right. with no hard stop mm -hmm. and the work is always going to be there tomorrow remember yes. that just mm -hmm. like for those of you who are <laughs> former nine to fivers if you left the work was going to continue right. and once you walked out that door they found someone to replace you now, and, and so here inside of your own business you mm -hmm. have to know that you set the rules and right. you set the boundaries so you can stop it's okay A absolutely yeah. absolutely and you know it's often we we can forget that we're actually in the in the office space right you know because we are at home so you know letting people know like hey 
you know, I have to go. Right. Absolutely. Um, even though I'm at home, I still have work to do and I have to go. Mm-hmm. But we'll talk more about that when we get back. And if you're listening, give us a call at 832-230-5592. And don't forget to share our video and like us on Facebook. This is Jolanda Jones from I'm a Tell It. When you're not able to watch us live on your mobile device, be sure to stay connected to Synergy Radio 1480 anywhere in Houston, in your house, in your office, or in your car by tuning in to 1480 AM. Synergy Radio Network, where it all comes together. The Morning Magazine is about reaching the different personalities that we express in our lives at any given time and addressing the psychological, spiritual, and emotional desires that attach to those personalities. It will surprise no one to uh, know that we exist simultaneously as child and parent, student and teacher, advocate and critic. We are, in fact, leaders and followers. We're not one cell organisms. The magazine brings to our listeners the informative data and entertaining conversations that help simplify these matters for us. Our magazine seeks to break through the clutter and make sense of these complexities of life by using information, people, and events with which people identify. Radio Network. You're listening to Synergy Radio 1480. Good and morning. We are back. Good morning. <laughs> if you are just joining us, we're talking about home based businesses and how to thrive inside of your home based business. So if you have any questions about that, please give us a call at 832-230-5592. Yes, and we are looking at your comments on Facebook as well. Good morning to all our viewers and listeners. Hi, Gwen. Hi, Contessa. <laughs> See you guys. Hi, Tawny. Uh, thanks for joining us. And so we were talking about, you know, what it is that you need when when working um, from home. Yeah. Some, some of the essentials, and we're going to really get into it. So, Tiffany, bring us back around and and what are some things that you know you you should should have when working from home? Like really establishing that that framework, like the the important stuff, like taxes and all that stuff. Right. So one of the things that you need to make sure that you have, because there are several, and we're only going to share a few with you today. Mm -hmm. One, before you start or to know if you want to work from home, you need to make sure it's legal first. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when we say make sure it's legal, not necessarily <laughs> the actual type of business. Right. But, well, but that too. That too. <laughs> But we, we're we, not judging. We're not judging you right now. This is judgment-free zone. <laughs> <laughs> However, you need to understand your zoning restrictions yes, absolutely. and the restrictions that are imposed by your homeowners association. <laughs> so if your clients are meeting you at your home and you have this extravagant home office and you want to invite people in, mm -hmm. you need to first make sure that your homeowners association is okay with it right. uh, if you live inside of a neighborhood. <laughs> And then you will also need proper insurance. Yes. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. some people don't understand the importance of insurance, mm -hmm. but especially if you're a sole, sole proprietor and you get sued, that's, that's mm -hmm. going to be on you. Right. So one of the things you need to do is not assume that your home business will be covered under your home insurance mm -hmm. or your renter's policy. Right. So, for example, if your store inventory is at your home, mm -hmm. your policy may not cover it because that's for your business. Right. right. So you need to be sure to get a business owner's policy. Also which known is as BOP. BOP. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> which is an insurance bundle that covers your business property and provides liability coverage for clients coming into your home. Right. So, and there are also other small business insurance companies right. like Hiscox, for example and they cover small businesses. Mm -hmm. So you want to look into that now if you haven't right. already done so, if you're operating a small business. We're going to have a whole show on insurance. Yeah. <laughs> small business insurance, yes. And some other things to think about, too, is are you equipped to even right. have a home office? Do you have a printer? Yeah. Do you have the Internet? 
Mm. Do you have a phone? <laughs> All of that, <laughs> I mean, right? Even though you have a cell phone, you know, it's good to keep your personal and business separate. You know, there are apps for uh, uh, cell phone or e for your cell phone, but you can have a work uh, number on there as well. Right, and but, we'll get into some of those tools later in the right, show. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not everybody has the luxury of, you know, defining their space in a designated room. Right. You know, maybe you have to draw a line in the house and say, hey, do not pass this line. <laughs> exactly. This is my workspace from 9 to 5. Right. And this is what it's going to be. You know, if you have to put a filing cabinet or a plant, like, this is my space. Right. So really defining that space within within your home and you know the tax implications of mm -hmm. of having a home business and depending on whether you're uh, a freelancer or you're an employee working from home you might be able to duck to deduct some of those home office uh, and home business expenses on your taxes right absolutely. and the the IRS actually offers two ways to claim a home office you have the regular method mm -hmm. which involves figuring out what percentage of your home is used for business and then apportioning the deductible expenses accordingly and then the other method is when you uh, is more simple simplified because you base it on square footage mm-hmm so $5 per square foot for the business of your home, you know, and, and so you calculate it that way. Right, yeah. And, and so you need to decide with your tax preparer mm -hmm. which way is going to be best for you and more beneficial for you. Right, Absolutely. right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then another thing, too, when we're talking about self-employed, mm -hmm. you know, you are a home business, but many people who start home businesses are suddenly self-employed mm -hmm. um, after being on W-2s for their whole lives. Yep. But you cannot be in that W-2 mentality because now you have different uh, tax implications. So don't necessarily, you know, you don't necessarily think about, oh, I have to put money aside for these quarterly taxes, right. for example. And that's a whole other ordeal, taxes. <laughs> yes, taxes. That can probably be a show in and of itself. Mm -hmm. uh, we just need to make sure we find a way to make it exciting as we bring it to you. Right. But when you start a home business and you start generating income, you will definitely need to pay taxes. And the best way to do that is to pay them quarterly. Absolutely. And yeah. someone said, don't forget a business account for Internet service, usually yes. faster speed and greater bandwidth. Absolutely. Yes. Good. Um, yes. So, um, you know, and again, when you are setting those boundaries at home, it's tough balancing work and family under the same roof you know people get frustrated because they think they should be able to balance everything perfectly all the time I know I thought I was the queen of time management <laughs> I really did until I yeah. started my own business but mm -hmm. that's not going to happen <clears throat> some days you need to put the focus and attention on family and other days it needs to be on work Right, absolutely. And that's why, like you said, having a hard start stop time so that mm -hmm. you can make sure that it all gets in. I am the queen of to-do list. <laughs> now, yeah. with being the queen of to-do list, I know that there are certain things that I have to get done in the day. Right. And for those of you who are looking for quick tips on how to be more productive at home, one of the things that I like to do is choose my top three. Mm. And after I choose my top three things, some of them may be really, really big projects that I need to complete right. and and I may only get one done that day yeah. but I know that I don't need to overwhelm myself mm -hmm. with a uh, 15 different things to do within a day unless Absolutely. it's just really menial tasks like uh, answering emails and things of that nature <laughs> right so you want to make sure that you master mm -hmm. that piece when you're in a home business because you can still overwhelm yourself even though you're not going to a Absolutely. nine to five I mean yeah. having a schedule just like you would if you were working a nine to five you have to schedule your doctor's appointments hair appointments all that stuff right building that time in so that you can focus on work you can focus on play mm -hmm. whatever you need to get done around the house exactly yeah and you'll also have to master some technology mm -hmm. that is new to you as well. <laughs> so when you're starting your home-based business, it's important to be efficient in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So there are certain ways that you meet people, like through uh, Skype and right. Google Hangouts. All of those pieces of technology you want to make sure that you're familiar with because you can't always afford to go and meet people in person right. through, for, when you're working for yourself in your home-based business. Those Absolutely. moments are precious. Mm -hmm. So you really need to get familiar with the tools that are available to you so that you can reach out to others in the technological space. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about all the things that you need in a home business, Tiffany, but what are some of the benefits of ho owning a home business? So some of the benefits, 
<laughs> well, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you do not have a boss breathing down your neck. Mm, yes. That's one of my favorite things about having a home-based right. business. I don't have to worry about being micromanaged. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about someone reviewing my work every single day. Mm. Uh, those are that. That's one of the main benefits. But also, you don't have to attend those uninspired <laughs> meetings, mm. those endless meetings that happen at right. work on a regular basis that right. you, you're like, we just stayed here for two hours yes. and that meeting could have taken 30 minutes. Right. <laughs> you know, we've all had those times. Right. So that's a benefit. And also, you don't have to drive in traffic. Mm. So for those of you listening who don't live in Houston, uh, traffic is really bad here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo. Yes. There are some freeways that give us the blues. Right. And I'm sure there's traffic in, you know, other parts of the of our country that are really bad as well. We just happen probably to live in one of the worst. Right. <laughs> so that's another benefit of having a home-based business. You don't have to worry about waking up at the crack of dawn to run to your car mm -hmm. and uh, hurry up to slow down right. to sit in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. Yeah. I think it, the a big thing, too, is flexibility. Yes. You know, we talk about managing home and work but you you can create that work life balance essentially for yourself that you may not have if you are at at a traditional office Right, yeah, so that's where the discipline comes in so that you can have that balance. Do mm -hmm. the amount of work that's necessary so you can play when it's time to play. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So what about the drawbacks oh, of my working goodness. from home? <laughs> well, you know, there are plenty of drawbacks, but yes. one of the main ones is isolation. Mm -hmm. So when I started my home business, one of the things that I experienced a lot of was being in the house mm -hmm. because when I first started, I was just focused focused on getting the work done right. uh, behind my computer. Now, for those of you who are in this space, that can lead to depression, mm -hmm. which leads to poor decision making. Mm -hmm. So you don't want that for your business. Right. So what I suggest is that you join various community groups and interact with other people in a volunteer setting, right. something that kind of offsets that loneliness or that feel, those feelings of isolation mm -hmm. that come when you are in business by yourself. And also taking a walk, <laughs> getting yeah, some fresh air. Absolutely. You know, because you get cabin fever sitting in the house. That's one of the reasons why I switched to a co-working space as well. And then obviously, you know, came back home. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, because there are benefits and drawbacks to both. But I, I had to get out of the house. And I'm like, I need to see people. Even yeah. though I was doing, you know, my, my, my job is client interfacing. But sometimes you just want to be around people. And you just have to change up the scenery. Absolutely. So another drawback is sinking into the comfort zone. Ooh, yes. And we talked a little bit about that earlier. Right. Not working where you sleep. Your couch and your my bed. My couch. <laughs> now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you all. I have a bit of a problem. <laughs> I love my couch. <laughs> it has a dent where couch. I sit all of the time, and it's my uh, dent. Yes. <laughs> you know? And so I love sitting there because it's so comfortable. But yes. one of the drawbacks of having your own home-based business is that mm -hmm. you start to move into that comfort zone. Because one of the things that people suggest is that you continue with your regimen as if you were in a nine to five, right? Right. right. So waking up early in the morning, getting your exercise in mm -hmm. or whatever it is you do, having your breakfast and then being at your computer by a certain time. Yes. And that's one of the things that I did adopt waking up and I knew I adjusted my time a bit because I didn't have to drive or anything. Right. So I said, you know, I'm going to be in front of my computer by mm -hmm. 9 a.m. Exactly. Every morning so uh, whatever with teeth brush with, wa <laughs> wash exactly <face. laughs> teeth brush wash face no, uh, you know right some clothes on yes because I like my pajamas too right <laughs> exactly <laughs> to be comfortable but when yeah. you're dressed it puts you in a different frame of mind absolutely and what if you have to do a video call you can't be sitting there in your pajamas exactly or in the bed or in the bed in the background is that your head 
<laughs> exactly. Not yes, happening. Absolutely yes. not. Yes. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you don't put yourself in a place where you get too comfortable because eventually I did see myself, hey, I'll just sit on the couch today. Yes, absolutely. All right, I'm only going to sit on the couch because I'm about to take my break. Right. I'm going to eat lunch. <laughs> right. And then that three turns hours into away. three hours later, you wake up like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. So again, finding that balance right. between <laughs> your business and personal life, you exactly. know, and also to, you know, really carving at the, out that time for your family and your friends, because right. that, that, that space is really sacred. That time is, is sacred. Absolutely. So, yes. And then you also have to think about your health as well. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get to the place where you're always at home and you become a bit lazy. Right. You don't do some of the things that you know you could do that are easier for you to do, actually, mm -hmm. like getting up and going to the gym right. or going for a walk outside or being near the refrigerator while you're at home right. and saying, oh, I'm just going to grab a little snack. Yes. You know, so overeating. Snacks all day. Yes, snacks all day <laughs> is real. But actually, all of those little snacks, have big calories right <laughs> you exactly. know and so when you're not moving on a regular and consistent basis mm -hmm. then you'll start to see that you'll end up gaining weight right and, and then sometimes it can be just because you're not moving as much not because you're overeating right but because your lifestyle has changed you're exactly. not on the go every single moment right as you would be inside of a nine to five Therefore, you might find that you might pick up a little bit of weight. Yes. I'm a witness. Or a lot. Yes. Right. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> I decided yeah. to put on some clothes today, and I can't fit them. Exactly. Yes. So thank you all for joining us. And if you have questions about building your business from home or running your business from home, give us a call here at KLVL 832-230-5592. If you are live streaming with us, Ask your questions in the comments and don't forget to like our page, Business Breakfast Talk Show. It's out yeah. there yeah. And, and we can keep complaining about it and not doing anything yeah. about it. Look, there's no reason for us to stay at home and not go and vote. Absolutely. When we yeah. know that. Yeah. All those criminal justice bills failed in the last session That's right. because we didn't have support. All of those education, when we, when the state has gutted public education the way that it has, when they get ready now through the voucher to take public funds and fund some of these private schools, yeah. I mean, if that doesn't get you, you excited... Yes. I mean, I, I don't know what will. Right. And that's yes. going to be at the top of their agenda, right. including decimating unions. That's right. another thing that Speaker Strauss stopped. Yes. He stopped the, the ability of the Republicans to take away the union's ability to take out dues from their members. If that happens in Texas, they're going to they're gonna lose membership, and unions are going to be pretty much extinct in Texas. That's what they're looking for. I, I, I hate to do this, man. It's yeah, 7 yeah, o'clock, yeah, and yeah, i got to yeah, go in and start this back quick. As, as, right. as, as, as always, as always, right. well, thank you. We've got nothing thank you, up for you. All right, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for doing that. And Ron Reynolds, uh, of, of course, we intend to have you have you back again. Uh, to, uh, to, definitely. To, uh, to, to, go in depth on, to go in depth on these matters. Well, yeah. I want the listeners to know, uh, Paris, that we're blessed to have someone like you that gives us that forum, that platform, to talk about these issues in a meaningful way. Uh, to engage the community so that they're aware. Because a lot of people, they don't read the newspapers anymore. And they get their information from social media. A lot of times that's not correct. Right. So this gives us a chance to dialogue uh, in, in depth and, in and, and, and peel back the onion yeah, yeah, to discuss yeah. these in a meaningful way. And I appreciate you. Yeah. You always have an open forum, a great dialogue. Uh, you always do your, your show prep to do your due diligence, and you always are very prepared. And I think that's, a, that's, a, that's an art. That's lost well, a lot I, of times. Well, I, I got to tell you, your, uh, your articles, your observations, uh, I, I, I scan for people sure. who really know the subject, sure. and knowing the subject matter brought us close to it. It was an intimate kind of article, and I want to build on it. And I well, want because I want to have you have I'll, I'll be back. You just tell me when, and I'll be there with bells and whistles on. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Perry. Ron Reynolds, thank you, thank you thank so you much. much. But, Thank you so much. We are KLBL, uh, the Synergy Radio Network. I am Paris Ely. All right, we'll be back after these messages.
Network.com. Hey, hey now, this is Amber Shaw inviting you to join me Sunday afternoons for Unplugged Praise. You'll get a dose of industry news, artist interviews, and music from some of your favorite artists such as John P. Key, Pastor Shirley Caesar, Marvin Sapp, and I can't forget about my Houston Gospel fam, Angela Bennett, Chad Brawley, Kathy Taylor, Wallace Grant II, and the list goes on and on. So tell your family, friends, and all your church members, Unplugged Praise is your kind of praise. Unplugged Praise with Amber Shaw, Sundays, 1 to 4 p.m., here on 1480 KLVL. And now, back to the show. All right, we are back here at the Business Breakfast Talk Show, and we are serving up some great information for you today. We're talking about home-based businesses and how to thrive inside of your home-based business. So if you have any questions, give us a call here at 832-230-5592, and we will take your question live on the air and if you're watching on Facebook make sure you've already shared this out if we didn't mention it before sharing us helps us to get the business breakfast talk show into the faces of potential new watchers and viewers so please help us out by doing that (laughs) now let's jump right back in we've been talking about home-based businesses and how to keep them running and you all on Facebook have been giving us some very good comments about what to do and what's hard what's not hard when it comes to home-based businesses now let's talk about some ways to keep your home-based business running like a well-oiled machine Absolutely. one of the things you have to do as we mentioned before is structure your day and I touched on this a bit earlier where you have to mimic the workplace with Mm -hmm. your schedule and you have to have a to-do list. So that's just a quick recap. But then you also have to motivate yourself with goal setting. That's one of the big big pieces Mm -hmm. about working in a home-based business. What are your financial goals or the revenue goals that you hope to achieve each day, each week, each month, each quarter? All of those things matter. And what are your per unit goals? For example, if you have an online business, how many units of that ebook do you want to sell? Right. You know, and if you are are working from your home and shipping things from your home, how many units of whatever it is that you're selling do you want to sell for that month? Right. You know, so you have to make those goals and that is actually a motivator. Uh, when you are able to count down and make it to your goal. So yes. make sure you do that. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a really good point. And so that's kind of a good segue into, so what must you do before mm-hmm. starting your home-based business? You right. know, we talked about, one of the things we did talk about was insurance, mm-hmm. you know, knowing what is covered um, and, and what's not covered. You yeah. know, really talk to an insurance agent and shop around. Don't mm-hmm. go with the first available thing because people are always trying to sell something. Um, identifying zoning laws. You know, right. zoning laws are very important and they vary depending on where you live and it's determined by your city and your county. Right. And home businesses that deal with the public have employees working out of their home, we mentioned this earlier, mm-hmm. or have non standard business hours are at a higher risk of being challenged in front yeah. of a zoning commission. I lived uh, in an area and the, the resident was running a home business. Mm-hmm. It was like a, a makeup uh, business or something, but she would have clients in and out all day, and they would be blocking driveways and things like that. And so we had to go to the city because it it was a problem, right? You know, so you have to think about that. Like, how is it affecting your neighbors? How is it affecting your community? You know, you can't have people coming in all hours of the night, right? <laughs> you know, exactly, uh, because that that's a problem. That yeah. will end up being a problem. And you also need to have these conversations with your neighbors because right. we're not saying that you can't have clients coming to and from your house. We're telling you, check your zoning laws to see what they say, but then also be courteous. Exactly. You know, it's nothing like owning a home but feeling like you don't own the 
the perimeter of your home because right. there's always somebody parked in front of your house or mm -hmm. that's the spot where you like to park but when you get home your neighbor's <laughs> client your neighbor's client is parked right there. you know all of those things need to be considered mm -hmm. when you're doing your home business because we want to make sure that while we're in business we're doing it with a certain level of excellence mm -hmm. and a certain level of courtesy Absolutely. as well mm -hmm. exactly and you know when considering those things also thinking about how you're going to fund your business. Yes. Are you going to put it on credit cards? Are you going to do loans? Are you going to cash out of your home equity, you right. know, through mm -hmm. refinancing? Um, and, you know, or are you going to do home equity lines of credit, for example? There are so many different ways of financing your business. We talked about some of these a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. But considering that, you know, a, a home-based business is still a business. You know, you have to you have to run it accordingly, accordingly, and know what your expenses are going to be. Absolutely, and one of the things that I might add is that you also need to start looking into re and in, in researching cloud-based tools. Yes. So allbusiness.com says this: cloud-based sync and share tools. Some of them are Sugar Sync. A cloud-based sync mm. and share solution. It only comes in. Ha it not only comes in handy while traveling, but for some people, it comes in handy when they're out of the office, giving them access to all of the data that they need right from their phone, mm. tablet, or laptop. Yes. So if you're sitting at your office desktop but sharing and collaborating, mm -hmm. there are features within Sugar Sugar Sync that are helpful and convenient when working with clients. I so, haven't heard of Sugar Sync, yeah. but um, I know we've talked about. Google and Dropbox uh, are, are other mm -hmm. good tools as well because you may need to access those things on the go. Absolutely. And in the event that your computer crashes, which <laughs> <laughs> I don't wish that on anybody, yes. you can still access those files from somewhere. Right. Um, you know, acquiring a business phone number, you know, I talked about this earlier. You don't want to mix your personal and business. You know, your cell phone. Your personal cell phone, that's sacred. You know, yes. I don't want people calling my personal number mm -hmm. because if someone's calling you at midnight, that's coming through your personal cell phone, right. and that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So separating those, separating that, and you can have, you don't have to have multiple cell phones. Right. You can have one cell phone, and there are apps for that. Right. You know, where you can have a business line set up. You know, some are as low as four ninety nine a month. You have right. sideline. Google Voice, you know, Smart Smart Line. There are so many different resources right. out there, and so some of those are no cost, and then mm -hmm. some of them are very low cost per month. But mm -hmm. the the way it's set up, you'll be able to tell when a number or a number is coming through that's calling right. on your actual business line versus mm -hmm. on your personal phone. Absolutely. So make sure that you look into that. Yes. Also, you need to acquire a business address, Joy. Yes. So. <laughs> even though you're working from home right you should not use your home address right as your business address primarily for security reasons you don't want people showing up and knocking at your door <laughs> exactly for a lot of online businesses they tend to use PO boxes mm -hmm. or their co-working space uh, address or something right. like that so you want to make sure that you go to your local UPS store mm -hmm. and get a physical address right. for a P.O. box and then set that up and you'll be good to go. Exactly. I think it's, it's really that simple. Right, yeah. right. I think, I think it's really important again and it goes back to establishing those boundaries and separating personal from business because even though you are in your home space, you have to separate personal from business. Absolutely. All right, so we've talked about all these things. And I know we always give you guys a lot of a, a lot of information, but you know it's it's a lot of things to to consider because you might think, oh, I'll just work from home, mm -hmm. but there are so many things that you have to think about. You know, from scheduling to financing, all all these different things. Mm -hmm. So, what what are some common misconceptions? You know, we 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 have all these assumptions about being at home. We talked a little bit about some of them earlier, but really just thinking about some of the, the assumptions or misconceptions about having a home home based business. Well, you know, so one of them we talked about earlier, which is just being so comfortable that you go and watch TV or you do some house cleaning and, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll get caught up later. You know, I have all day to do this, so I'm just going to do this load of laundry real right. quick or I'm going to clean the kitchen or whatever it is. 
you can't do that. That's a common misconception that just because you have a home-based business, there is that much flexibility. Exactly. Now, the truth of the matter is there is that much flexibility, but not if you want to have a successful business. Right. Right? And also, um, I can run my business and take care of my kids at the same time. No. No. <laughs> no, you can't. Not That's, at the same yeah, time. Not at the same time. Not at the same time. So one of the things you'll want to do is invest in a babysitter. Or mm -hmm. if, if you feel the need to keep your children close by, then someone to come in and actually watch your kids during actual business hours or consider maintaining that expense of them going to the daycare mm -hmm. you know that that definitely needs to be something that you delineate right yeah. absolutely and we we keep saying this but setting those boundaries right um you know having uh you having the assumption that you don't need a business plan for right. a home-based business mm -hmm. at one point as or at some point if you are seeking funding for your home-based business right you need a business plan. Absolutely. If you're going to a bank or any investor, you absolutely need a business plan. Mm -hmm. So go back to our second episode. We talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then also the frills that we enjoy in life, we sometimes tend to think as home business owners that we can deduct those things on right. our taxes. And so one of those sets of things is, manicures they're tax deductible right yeah they make me feel good i work better when i feel good so yeah. i can deduct those on my taxes no no that's a, that's a personal expense. yeah that's a personal expense <laughs> so you have to learn uh, I mean, and of course we're not tax professionals but these are some of the just the common misconceptions mm -hmm. yeah exactly um, um, we talked about getting dressed, getting yeah. dressed for work, you know, mm -hmm. and people may say, oh, I feel a little unprofessional when I work in my pajamas, but they're so comfortable. I don't right. want to get out of these clothes, but you know, that that's, get, get dressed, right? At least brush your teeth and wash your face. At least do that, right? <laughs> Because, you know, like I said, you know, if you have a conference call or a video conference call, they don't need to see you in your pajamas. Right. Uh, another thing is people think that they don't have to market sometimes when they are in a home-based business. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a website, so that's good enough. One of the things that you have to remember is that it's still a business. Mm -hmm. Just because you don't have a brick and mortar does not mean that the same due diligence is not necessary. Right. So one of the things you want to do is have a marketing plan in place as well. And this is something that you should do before mm -hmm. you even consider moving into a home-based business. These things need to be in place. The, these are foundational tools. Right. So that's a misconception. So if you have a website and that's all you're doing, that's not enough. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Well, when we come back, we will talk more about home-based businesses. Uh, you can call us at 832-230-5592. Access to health care. Access to health care. Yeah, mean, it's, 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 it's out there, yeah. and, and we can keep complaining about it and not doing anything yeah. about it. Look, there's no reason for us to stay at home and not go and vote. Absolutely. But we yeah. know that yeah. all those criminal justice bills failed in the last session That's right. because we didn't have support. All of those education, when we, when the state has gutted public education the way that it has, when they get ready now through the voucher to take public funds and fund some of these private schools, yeah. I mean, if that doesn't get you, you excited, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what will. Well, and that's yeah. going to be at the top of their agenda, right. including decimating unions. That's right. another thing that Speaker Strauss stopped. Yeah. He stopped the, the ability of the Republicans to take away the union's ability to take out dues from their members. If that happens in Texas, they're going to they're going to lose membership and unions are going to be pretty much extinct in Texas. That's what they're looking for. I, I, I hate to do this, man. It's yeah, 7 o'clock yeah, yeah, and yeah, I got to yeah, go in and start this back quick. As, all right. Right. As, as, as always, well, thank right. you. we got nothing thank you, up for you. All right, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for doing that. And Ron Reynolds, uh, of, of course, we intend to have you have you back again. Uh, to, uh, definitely. To, uh, to, to go in depth on to go in depth on these matters. Well, yeah. I want the listeners to know 
uh, Paris, that we're blessed to have someone like you that gives us that forum, that platform, to talk about these issues in a meaningful way uh, to engage the community so that they're aware. Because a lot of people, they don't read the newspapers anymore. And they get their information from social media. A lot of times that's not correct. Right. So this gives us a chance to dialogue uh, uh, in, in depth and, in and, fact, and peel back the onion yeah, yeah, to discuss yeah. these in a meaningful way. And I appreciate you. Yeah. You always have an open forum, a great dialogue. Uh, you always do your, your show prep to do your due diligence, and you always are very prepared. Well, and I think that's, a, that's, a, that's an art. That's well, lost a lot of times. Well, I, I got to tell you, your, uh, your articles, your observations, uh, I, I, I scan for people sure. who really know the subject. Sure. And knowing the subject matter brought us close to it, it was an intimate kind of article, and I want to build on it. And I well, will, because I, I want to have you. Have I'll, I'll be back. You just tell me when, and I'll be there with bells and whistles on. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Perry. Rod Riddle, thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you so much. We are KLBL, the Synergy Radio Network. I am Paris Ely. All right, we'll be back after these messages. You're listening to Synergy Radio Network. We'll be back after these messages. 1480 AM, KLVL, Pasadena, Houston, and 95.3 FM, KT37GS. Good morning, and we are back here at the Business Breakfast Talk Show, where we're talking about the joys of home-based businesses. So we want to make sure that you have all the information you need. If you have any questions about building a home-based business, give us a call here at 832-230-5592. And if you're joining us via our online components, make sure that you continue to talk with us. We're reading those comments, and we want to be able to answer your questions online. So if you have any questions, all of our Facebook family, make sure that you type those in because we're going to be answering those questions this segment if you have any. Yes. So, Joy, we're back. <laughs> we're talking about home-based businesses. So let's start by talking a little bit about yours. Now, we started off. <laughs> We yeah, when, talking I, about, when I had the giggles. This yes, morning. but let's talk a little bit about it. So what was the decision maker for you when you decided that you wanted to move into the home-based business sector? Right. Well, for me, you know, I wanted to definitely have a business where, one, I enjoy what I was doing, but it allowed me the flexibility and also my overhead was low yeah you know we talked about financing and so thinking about keeping my costs to a bare minimum mm -hmm. if I didn't need an office because yeah it sounds great oh I have an office I, you know I get to decorate my space and all that well I can do that at home right. you know and so it was something that I really had to think about because I'm like okay at what point do I need an office you know if I have people that are working for me remotely we don't really need an office you know mm -hmm. when I get to the point where it's expanding locally and we need that space then yeah that's something to consider but in the meantime you know when I first started I was like okay I definitely want to keep my cost to a minimum and the best option for me was to consider a, uh, consider working from home so then tell me a little bit about the whole employee piece. Mm -hmm. Now you said when we start expanding. That made me think about some things, some some challenges that I have in my business as far as employees are concerned. Right. Or do you feel like you're at a point where you might start looking for additional employees uh, to take on and what do you think that's going to look like for you? Well, I, I personally like the Richard Branson approach of having your employees work from home. But just because you can work from home, you can't make the assumption that your employees can. Right. And, you know, that's also something to talk about, too, is how do you manage your employees from home? You know, I work with, uh, I've worked with interns and work with subcontractors, and, you know, there's a follow-up piece there. You have to... Everybody needs to set deadlines for themselves. Mm -hmm. There needs to be some project management, task management in place so that you can maintain that laser focus on getting the task done. Right. And that's something else to think about, too, about, you know, what does it really take to work from home? We talked about the, the tangibles, but the type of person you need to be to work from home. You need to be highly organized. You know, your closet should not look like your desk. Or, oh or vice God. versa. Your yes. desk should not look like your closet yeah. if mm -hmm. your closet is messy. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm the type of person I cannot work in a chaotic workspace. I have to, you know, have things organized. So 
it takes it takes a high high level of organization, I think, you know, to have a home based business because you you have to organize your time, you have to organize your projects, um, and so essentially you have to have laser focus. Um, you need to have the ability to work alone mm -hmm. because it does get lonely. Yeah, and you talked about that, but you have to also know when you need to take that time for yourself, having great communication skills because you become a salesperson when you're at home. <laughs> oh yes, I mean, well, that's the thing. The you have to learn the art of salesmanship right. when you are working for yourself, and it's mm -hmm. not about being pushy or overbearing. It's really more so about how do I organize my thoughts in a way that are going to be compelling and convincing right. to others that I want to buy my product Absolutely. or service. You Absolutely. know, yeah. So that's a craft that you definitely need to brush up on mm -hmm. if you're going to be in business solo as a solopreneur right. at home so right. figuring out what are the best sales tactics and mm -hmm. how to do that without being abrasive or yes, pushy absolutely yeah and one of the last things i wanted to mention too is being self-motivated because mm -hmm. it really takes a lot mm -hmm. you know you're at home you're grinding you have to keep yourself motivated because it's easy to stay in the bed all day mm -hmm. but we have to stay motivated and have to keep keep pushing forward yeah yeah. And I think discipline is probably the word that sticks out the most yes. to me. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have discipline at the end of the day, you're not going to be as successful as you think mm -hmm. you might be. So if you're already struggling at work to actually do eight hours of work, right. you may not be successful as an independent business owner right. because we all have those people who come into the office they work for a little bit and then they get on the internet they do shopping or whatever if you already do that inside of your nine to five <laughs> right you'll do it at when home. you'll do it at home even more and you know research actually shows that mm -hmm. uh, most people who have eight hour jobs or mm -hmm. nine hours if you include lunch right they only work two hours a day. <laughs> what? Yes. That's, I mean, <laughs> that's no, the truth. No, not on my time. Yeah, that's they, a problem. No, they do. <laughs> and it's such a shame. Our producer is over there shaking not, his head. Not yes. on my dollar. <laughs> that's a problem. But it is a problem, yeah. and it does happen. So wow, as we get hours. ready to wrap up, let's talk about a few different uh, things that people can inject into their brains as far as opportunities to start home-based businesses mm -hmm. are concerned. Yeah, you know, yeah. there are so many jobs out there. You know, people are always either, you know, we talked about the side hustles last week, but really um, there are so many things. You know, if you if you bake, you yeah. know, you can be a baker, you can be a writer, um, social media mm -hmm. specialist or manager, a lot of different things, graphic designer. Yeah. Uh, what, are, what are some you can think of? I'm thinking of basic stuff. Some people have made big money in cleaning service mm -hmm. now you you don't have to be a person who likes to clean right but if you can get contracts to clean these buildings yes you know you can employ other people to do that and you just make sure that you you have your own margin of profitability for right. yourself you Absolutely. know so that a cleaning service is definitely a more popular one there, there have been more and more popping up over this past year actually yes. also consulting mm -hmm. now we throw that word around very loosely yes. sometimes <laughs> You know, and people think they can be a consultant about <laughs> just about anything. Anything. But you have to have expertise right. in something mm -hmm. so that you can market yourself as an advisor to others who are looking to work within that area. Yes. So if you're already at your 9 to 5 and you've been doing it at a certain level of excellence for a period of time and you've gotten results mm -hmm. in that area, then start testing the waters. Right. Start seeing if the consulting piece would be something that you would like. Absolutely. Before you jump completely into it, you need to have leads and all of that good right. stuff before you jump into it. So start off doing it as a side hustle mm -hmm. and then try to see if it can uh, manifest itself into something that's more full time. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's been great. I want to say hello to Adjua. Thank you for listening. All right. <laughs> but uh, we are done here today, and we can't wait to talk to you all next week. Yes, and when you we talk to you all next week, make sure that you've shared this show. Yes. And we want to thank you for tuning in to the Business Breakfast Talk Show, your most important meal of the day. Don't forget to share the video as well as like our Facebook page, the Business Breakfast Talk Show. If you want your questions answered or you're seeking a partner with us, yes. Through sponsorship, email us at breakfast 
at SynergyRadioNetwork.com. See you next week. Breakfast is served. We are now Synergy Radio. Powerful talk that inspires change. All phase assistance care.